Hello everyone and welcome to the D Heart House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. In this video I'm going to talk about all the things that I managed to finish in the month of December, talk about some continuing projects and new projects on the needles or on the crochet hooks or whatever, you get the gist. Uh, so today is all about wrapping up the month of December. Uh, a few things are different. One being my hair color. I did dye my hair over the winter break. Uh, and today I've already done uh, two rounds of grocery shopping because I have to go. Not everything is available at one store, so then I have to drop off groceries at home and then go to the second store and then come back home. So. It's already afternoon here, and <laughs> I need to get this recorded before I run out of steam. All right, so it's the first weekend in January, and it's time to wrap up the month of December. Uh, the month of December was pretty busy to start with, so just to give it a little context, um, I teach for a living at a community college, and final exams wrapped up in the first week of December. And then we got the remaining three weeks off for the winter break, holiday break. And then we had to be back at work January 2nd. Yeah, so <laughs> I hate starting work January 2nd because everyone is still shooting off fireworks two, three, five days later. Um, but anyway, it's just horrible sleep. Like the first few days of the new year because of all of the noise and yeah anyway so I had three weeks off of work which was amazing uh, we drove down to Texas to see family and we stayed there a bit but not as long as we wanted to because um, illnesses started getting shared around in the family so we ended up leaving early to come home so that we would be sick at home and not exposing the entire family and yeah so we came home and basically stayed at home for a week just being sick and so it wasn't super fun um but I got a lot of knitting done because I didn't really have energy to do much else so I do have knitting to share with you um, I wasn't thinking I was going to get a lot done because we were traveling to see family and I knew we'd be busy doing things like shopping and playing games and sharing uh, TV shows with each other and there's a bug flying around. Um, so on the trip I packed small projects. So I packed three small projects and I just realized I left one of them out in the house so I'll have to grab it. But I packed um, two pairs of socks to work on and a dishcloth, and I did manage to finish those things. But I only finished them after we got back home. So I made some progress on, on the road trip, on the drive down, um, but Michael and I were sharing the driving, and with it being winter time, it just gets, it's dark several hours of of the of the day I don't know if you can call it day if it's night but I you know what I'm saying it gets dark early and it was too dark for me to knit especially since the the yarn colors I was using um, had one of them is completely dark I'll show you them in a moment and the other one had some dark bits in it so it was hard to see once it got dark enough outside so it's hard to really kind of get the knitting in. But I did end up finishing the projects just not where I thought I would finish them. I thought I would finish them while we were visiting family. But I ended up finishing them when we got back home. So my first finished object of the month of December is a pair of socks. And these are actually for, for my husband, for Michael. And I knit these out of hand spun yarn which I also spun in the month of December uh, and I used a commercial yarn to go with it for a couple of reasons one I didn't think I had quite enough hand spun yarn to do 
the heels, the toes, and the cuffs as well. And I was right because I have so little of this yarn left. So it worked out very nicely. Um, but also uh, the striping detail that's going on here. Um, I find it fun every once in a while, uh, sometimes with the knitted socks, or the knitted socks, sometimes with the self-striping socks, I don't want to inter interrupt the stripes um, by working it in the heel, and sometimes I'll go ahead and work it in the heel and it doesn't bother me. It just depends. But I had already planned that I would use the um, a separate yarn for the heels and the toes and the cuffs. So the hand spun yarn I made out of K and C cozy yarn from Joann's and basically it's a it looks like roving like it's a, a loosely spun single ply bulky weight um, yarn. So I used one, two, three different colors and I pulled off sections and aligned them up in a striping sequence and um, spun it to ply. And the intention was that I was hoping to get lots of marling going on, but I got about the same amount as marling as straight up stripes, which is kind of fun. Uh, so I had a, a lot of fun knitting up these socks. It was never boring because it was, because it's hand spun. I didn't like go through the effort of super measuring each color. I didn't want to. I wanted it to be like this, this stripes a little bit longer than the previous one, just because it is, because that's how much fiber I pulled off. Um, and I, and I really like how they turned out. So, um, that's that. The commercial yarn that I paired with it is from Hobby. It's their Black Friday sock yarn. And, uh, it comes in a two pack, uh, light blue and a dark blue. And they have different color combinations, but, uh, basically you can only get them in the two pack of the, the two colors together. So I thought the light blue paired nicely. Um, I have a dark blue, but I wasn't sure once I knit it up if it was going to exactly match this dark blue. And I figured it doesn't matter. Uh, it was nice to have a different shade of blue uh, show up in these socks. So yeah, I knit them top down, which is my preferred method, uh, two by two ribbing um, throughout the sock. Uh, plain stockinette on the bottom of the foot, but I continue the two by two ribbing down the instep or the top of the foot. I do a heel flap and gusset, and on this one I did the eye of partridge heel, and then just a rounded toe, pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, so now that I've shown them to you, I can actually put them in Michael's sock drawer and he can start working on them. But I called these my blue Christmas socks because I had spun the yarn in these different shades of blue and I was working on them around Christmas time so it just kind of made sense. So these are my blue Christmas socks and they're a gift so now I can, um, now I can give them to my husband. He already knows that they're his and he's seen them and he's tried them on but I said I have to show them on the podcast before you're allowed to wear them and he totally understood. <laughs> and the second pair of socks I finished is actually a pair, sorry there's a dog hair on the sock. Um, I actually started this pair before the blue Christmas socks but you can see why I finished them second. I mean, this yarn is dark, y'all. Like, this is a dark navy blue. Don't get me wrong, they're beautiful. Now that they're finished, I think these are gonna be socks that Michael wears a lot. Um, I knit him a pair of black socks uh, that were all black. I think I put a contrasting heel in them, but they were all black socks and he would wear them all the time which makes sense. They go with a lot of outfits and things, but 
this was really difficult to knit because the color is so dark and it's the time of year where um, even when the even during the daytime it's not always super sunny it's uh, I live in the Pacific Northwest and in the winter it rains a lot so um, I don't live in at a high altitude I'm at a pretty low altitude I'm in like I'm in one of the valleys and so it doesn't really snow here like barely like maybe we get snow and then it melts the same day so <laughs> um but what I'm trying to say is even during the daytime it's kind of cloudy so it's not like there's a lot of nice bright daylight so it, it was really hard. I didn't realize how much I was straining my eyes knitting on these until I'd set them down and go wow my my eyes feel sore so next time I knit a dark pair of socks I should I should try to do it in the summertime instead of the winter time just so that I have that daylight coming in through the window and it's so much easier to see that way but anyway the yarn is from hobby it's from that same black friday yarn pack so this is the darker blue and then this is the lighter blue and they come together I've got two skeins of each color each skein is around 100 grams and I didn't even use a full 100 grams to knit this pair I still have a bunch left over and I didn't do any contrast it's just all the solid blue I knit these cuff down again two by two ribbing for the the instep the top of the foot uh, as well as the leg but I tried to do this detail where I did one by one ribbing for the cuff and then did like some eyelets here before switching into the two by two ribbing and I mean I don't I can I can't really see it so I can't tell if it was I'd say it wasn't worth it because I can't really see it <laughs> I can't I can't really see the eyelets it's just I think I did that work for nothing really so it kind of makes me sad um, but I think ultimately so when I take this off the blocker you can kind of tell because the two by two ribbing cinches in a lot more than one by one ribbing so you can tell there's different ribbing up here as opposed to this sock where it's two by two ribbing the whole way so you can see it's kind of evenly cinch cinched in anyway because I knit it because I knit top down this is where I cast on so I had just already decided to do the one by one ribbing right from the get-go and I I don't know anyway I did it on the first sock so I did it on the second sock so that they would match and it wouldn't bother me <laughs> uh, but I don't know that I will do that again uh, heel flap and gusset but I didn't do eye of partridge because this yarn is so dark I feel like you probably wouldn't have seen it anyway so I just did the regular slip stitch kind um, and they're just a standard toe yep so these are both for Michael so now he has two pairs of socks going into his sock drawer and they kind of match each other so he's getting he's getting blue socks so after I finished the socks I well I was sick <laughs> I was spending a lot of time in my craft room so Michael and I were both just like so out of it um, my sinuses were stuffed up I had a lot of sinus pressure so I just kept having headaches throughout the day and Michael had a little bit of that going on but he had an insanely runny nose so basically um, we were kind of annoying each other with our symptoms <laughs> and we were tired and just 
you know, we had just spent a bunch of time in a car together and the end of a long quarter and then just immediately went on a trip. And so we just, we took a couple days to just be in like separate parts of the house, <laughs> watching whatever we want on, on our TV shows, catching up on podcasts, that kind of thing. So I hung out in my craft room for a good like two, three days, just sitting here watching TV and working on whatever I wanted to work on. And it was really zen and I loved it. So I was looking around the craft room going, okay, what else can I finish? Because it's going to be a new year and, you know, it's a good time to finish things up and I'm on this break. So if there's something I can finish, I want to. And a really easy thing to finish was this set of dish gloss. So I had already knit two of these earlier and I needed to finish up the third one to finish the set. So that's what I did. I finished this uh, dishcloth. So this is knit out of, um, it's the, it's cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby. It's their, I love this yarn brand. I can't remember if it's called like, I love this cotton or if it's like, I love this yarn but it's the it's the Hobby Lobby brand of the cotton yarn and this is in the uh, forest green colorway so I've got one in um, moss stitch and this is just knit uh, cast on for the edge and then just knit up in rows and I've got you know grandmother's favorite which is knit on, on the bias just in garter stitch and then I've got one in this tan colorway. Oh, it goes that way. And this one's in a seed stitch. So I had knit a set of dishcloths previously for the fall season in like a nice, um, I don't want to say orange. It's, it's a shade of orange, but it's like a deeper shade of orange, not like a bright pumpkin, but more like a caramely cinnamony color um but yeah so i went with uh dark green for more of like the christmas time um season and so these are finished so three more dish gloss for the kitchen um and i'm i'm a little bit motivated to make my own dish cloths and towels because I'm finding it more and more difficult to find cotton towels in the store. They all seem to be microfiber, but I don't really care for microfiber. Um, it has its places and I already have enough microfiber towels for those like little cleaning things. But in the kitchen, the microfiber towels seem to just push the water around they don't really absorb it so if we're using a microfiber towel to dry dishes to wash a pot and then dry it to put it away with a towel and it doesn't seem to actually get dry and i just find that very annoying so i don't i don't like them <laughs> don't like them and so i'm like well i'll just get cotton yarn which i know is 100 percent cotton and i'll just make towels and then and then I'll be happy, <laughs> be happy twice over because I'll have made it and gotten enjoyment out of making the towel, but then I'll also have a cotton towel in the kitchen that will actually dry my pots and pans. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I finished this set and so now I can put it back in the kitchen and that was just a really easy one to finish right away because I only had the one dish towel left to make. So after that, I would finished three projects almost three days in a row. Um, and I was feeling that high of, oh my gosh, look at all these things I'm finishing. What else can I finish, right? So I'm looking through my bags of, of whips and I've got um, a shawl that I'm working on that's brioche with some hand spun. 
Um, I had a couple of those actually. One of them I'm gonna scrap, but one of them I love and I'll keep working on. Um, I've got some really old whips that just need to go away. But what I reached for next was a sweater that I had in progress. And I just wasn't super motivated to work on it, but I was like, you're sick, you're not in your right frame of mind, whatever, just finish this sweater. <laughs> so, so I did. I finished a sweater. And it did take me a few days. So I had already finished um, the front piece. So this is a free pattern on Ravelry. This is a raglan pullover. And I've had this in my pattern library for a few years now. And I bought the yarn, I bought this yarn for this pattern back in the day. And that was actually, I think, down in Texas when I lived in Texas. So it has moved with me uh, up here to Washington. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to knit this dang sweater. I'm going to get it done. <laughs> uh, and so it's knit um, bottom up in pieces and you seam them together. And to be honest, I didn't read that in the pattern before buying the yarn and stuff. And I should have. But again, I had already purchased the yarn. It's been in my stash. I've moved it from state to state. And I just said, let's just, let's just do it, actually. Um, and part of my hesitancy with this construction is that I've knit some bottom-up garments in the recent past and they haven't fit me. They either stretch out and become much longer than they should be or um, I just can't get the sizing right. I'm having sizing issues with bottom-up garments because I can't try them on as I go and so they're for one too long and with the other one it was also too wide. <laughs> it's like Okay, so I'm going into this bottom-up garment going, oh, please don't do this to me again. But I had already knit the front, uh, the front piece. No, the back piece. The pattern has you start with the back piece. So it has these stripes on the shoulders and these stripes on the body. And I like that the stripes are different. It's what drew me to the pattern in the first place is it's got this very um, sporty look to it. And I like that. So, uh, so I knit the back piece first. And then the pattern says, go ahead and knit the front piece, which is super similar. Um, it's got the same stripes. They go all the way around. But you have to do these little bits right here. <laughs> that's the only thing that's different. And then you knit the sleeves flat and you make two of those bottom up and then you got to sew the, the pieces together and then you have to pick up for the neck and that's it. <laughs> Uh, so I did mattress seaming for the first time and I'm actually really happy with it. So this is part of the, um, increasing, decreasing, or increasing, decreasing. Oh my gosh, this is part of the decreasing of, of knitting these pieces flat and then they're mattress stitched here and on the sleeve. I can show you as well the mattress stitching to join them. It's it's basically invisible. You can't see the mattress stitching. I was really intimidated by sewing these pieces together and it turns out that method is actually super easy. And so seaming pieces together actually doesn't scare me anymore. Uh, it was 
it was pretty straightforward and it worked out really well uh, there were a few times where I needed to um, rip back a little bit and redo it excuse me because in mattress stitching um, in the video I watched it give this advice uh, is to only do a few and then pull it tight and then only do a few and then pull it tight and so I was having a hard time figuring out how much is a few <laughs> So I do like seven, sewing up seven stitches and go to pull it tight and it would, it'd get tight at the top, but then down near the bottom, the first couple wouldn't tighten up and I just kept pulling on the yarn and it wouldn't tighten. So I had to, so basically I'd pull it tight after every three stitches and then that worked really well. So I'll just have to keep that in mind, but. The yarn is from Michaels. It's their their impeccable, uh, the Michaels brand of yarn. It's 100% acrylic. The colors are taupe and burgundy. And I'm happy with the result. And what's funny is it actually fits me and it fits Michael. <laughs> so we both tried it on. Uh, and it fits both of us. So Michael's going to get a new sweater. So this is going to be for Michael. So that was not the intent. I was, I sized it for me, but it's, it's funny. He was like, actually, I kind of like it. So, um, yeah, so he's going to get a new sweater. The only thing that didn't work out with this pattern was that it seemed like, sorry, I, we have bugs in the house because of the plants that I brought in from the garden. And um, I think there were some bugs hiding in the soil and now our house is just full of them. So <laughs> lessons to be learned. But um, the sleeve had like four too many rows in it and so it didn't line up row by row with the body of the sweater there's there's this extra bit and I had to get a little creative on like sewing up the hole but you should be able to look at this and go yeah that doesn't really line up it's weird and yeah, it was just on the front side of the sweater. So the back side lined up fine. So either I feel like the front side of the sweater is really the part that had four too few of rows. I went back through and and double checked everything. And I, I knit what was written there. So I think it might just be a little bit too short. If I went and, honestly, if I counted the rows from where you start shaping for the arm and doing the decreases, I bet if I counted the rows in the pattern for the back piece and the front piece, they'd be off by like four rows. I didn't do that, but I bet that's the case. All I did was double check that I followed the pattern. <laughs> I did follow the pattern, so. Uh, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, it looks really awkward when it's sitting flat here, but it's not like you can tell when it's being worn. It's all up in the armpit, so it's fine. Uh, and it's a pretty loose fitting garment. It's got some positive ease to it, so it's not um, this form fitting piece, so. Anyway, I'm happy I used up, I think, three full skeins of yarn and a little bit of a fourth one. So that has helped take a lot out of my stash. But that's not all I did. <sighs> so I finished two pairs of socks, a dishcloth, and most of a sweater. But there's still more. 
I started and finished a spinning project within like five days, four days, I don't know. I finished this the night of New Year's Eve. So I finished this project on the last day of 2023. So it counts for December. <laughs> um, so I have this yarn, this fiber in my stash. I purchased this. So I put tags on fiber and I need to do better about um, things that already come with labels. I need to be writing on them, but uh, this didn't come with a label. So I added my own. I purchased this fiber in July of 21. So it's basically two years old. And this is from Wild Wool Farms. It's on her panda base. So it's 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, and 10% nylon. And it's 120 grams, which is an awesome amount. So it weighed 120 grams. And I spun this up with the intention of making socks out of it. So this is the second braid I purchased from Wild Wool Farms. I had purchased two of them in July of 21 with the intention of making socks. And I already did that with one of the braids. I kind of tested it out on Michael. So I had spun the yarn, I knit his socks, and he's been wearing them. We've been washing them just like we wash all of our other socks. We wash them in the washing machine with cold water on the gentle cycle. And then we air dry them and on, on the clothesline and then we put them in the dryer just on air dry so there's no heat but um, it kind of helps get out like the dog hair and um, other things that have collected in the fabric so the main thing we get out of our hand knit socks it, that way is uh, is the dog hair uh, and these and the hand spun socks have stood up really well during all of that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make another one. So my second braid, um, I don't have the braid to show you because I've spun it up now, uh, is in four balls. Yeah, let me show you. The other sides look better. It's this beautiful gold color with some blue and some purple. And it was gorgeous to spin. I'm super excited to knit this up. I'm going to make a pair of socks for myself. Um, yellow is my favorite color, like a nice golden yellow. So this is right up my alley. And I didn't do any kind of color management. I just, um, I didn't split it down the middle. I just took off from the end. And so, uh, yeah, basically this is the first part of the braid, the second part of the braid, the uh, third part of the braid, and then the last part of the braid. <laughs> uh, and that's just how it worked out. So um, yeah, I got, I spun this on my electric spinning wheel. I have an electric, uh, what's it called? Electric Eel Wheel Nano 2. E-E-W Nano 2. And it has small bobbins, as you can imagine, which is why these balls are kind of small. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it's nice because then it's already kind of split up for two socks. I'm going to have a lot of extra because I spun up 585 meters. Um, hang on, let me convert that to yards. I forget that the yarn counter that I bought, which will count the length of it, is actually in meters and not yards. So I have to keep converting it. Hang on. Okay, so 585 meters is roughly 640 yards, which is nuts. <laughs> Uh, I could get two pairs of socks on a, out of this, possibly. So, 
but yeah, it's right around that fingering weight mark because it is 120 grams total. So it's, you know, more than a typical skein. A typical skein of a sock yarn is going to be around the 100 grams. And this has got an extra 20. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, this was really fun. I just um, sat on the couch. And what's really nice about the electric spinning wheel is that I can be, I can have my legs propped up in in the reclined position and be spinning yarn. And I don't have to sit up and have my feet on the ground to work the treadle. So uh, that was why I chose the electric spinning wheel uh, so that I could recline, put my feet up, kind of lay my head back and just relax. We watched Christmas movies and <laughs> I spun yarn. I went to go pick up my works in progress and I found the hand spun that I have left from those blue Christmas socks. You can see that it is, it is not very much. Um, so it would not have been enough to do ribbing, heels, and toes on two socks. So uh, the, it, it just, it worked out really well. So I do have some projects carrying over to the next month. Uh, one of those projects is another pair of socks. So I was working on my, uh, my spinning and while I was letting the singles rest before applying them together and while the yarn was soaking and drying, you know, all those stages where, uh, the, the yarn is still being worked on, but it's, um, I'm not actively working on it. Uh, so I cast on a sock and this is actually out of more hand spun. This is some of the uh, Romney mohair that I had um, prepared into Rolex and spun up. And I made a whole video about spinning this up three ply and knitting the socks and all that good stuff. And I had a lot of the fiber and I also made a two ply version because the the three ply yarn in the socks those socks are very thick and um, the shoes the tennis shoes I had at the time I've now retired those shoes and I have new new shoes but uh, it was actually really hard to wear the thicker hand knit socks in my tennis shoes they just wouldn't they'd be really tight and it wasn't comfortable so I didn't wear them a lot and now I have new tennis shoes I actually wore a thicker pair of hand spun socks to the shoe store while shopping so I would make sure to buy a pair that those socks fit into <laughs> and they're amazing so anyway uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the hand spun sock vibe and I'm all about it right now. So I felt like casting on an, another pair of hand spun socks. So this is out of the Romney mohair and again, top down. So I had recently finished, uh, another hand spun pair of socks and you guys, I went to go put them on and those socks I knit um, toe up, which I don't usually do, because I have a lot of trouble with um, the bind off at the top. I either get the bind off too tight, and then I can't even get the sock onto my foot because I can't get it over my heel, or it's too loose and it feels like the sock is falling down all the time. So. I like knitting my socks top down because the cast on I use is a German twisted cast on and something about it is just perfect. I love it. It's the perfect tension. So 
I, I, forevermore I will knit my socks top down. Never again toe up. Because you guys, those toe up socks, I can't put them on. I think I broke the, I said I'm putting this sock on. Gosh darn it. And I heard some snapping. So I think I actually broke the yarn putting it on my foot. And I'm just so sad about it. Because I'm not, I'm not going to find the end and redo that. I'm just not. I'm not going to do it. So anyway, top down is the only way I will knit socks from now on. Uh, I decided, I have no idea why, but I decided to do twisted one by one ribbing. So I prefer one by one ribbing on my socks and Michael prefers two by two ribbing which works out really nicely because then it's easier to tell whose sock is whose after when we're doing the laundry. But for some reason I felt the need to make this twisted rib and not just regular ribs. So that's what I'm doing is one by one twisted rib. I've got um, 20 rounds for uh, the ribbing section here. And then I went into the heel flop and gusset. I did an eye of partridge heel. And I just made it past the gusset decreases. And so I just need to keep going. But you can see I have lots of yarn. It is in this light orange color. Um, I've called it orange sherbet because that's what it looks like to me. It's a very pale orange. In some places it looks like a pale yellow. Um, it's got a little bit of that variation in it, so it's not just a solid color, and it's it's quite beautiful. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm working on. I can't remember when I cast this on, but it was sometime late December. But then I also have a cast on from New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve? Yes. Yeah, no, I did not cast this on Christmas Eve because I felt awful Christmas Eve. I cast this on on New Year's Eve. So it's a cardigan. Um, this is one of the items on my winter knit list. So uh, the previous video I posted on the channel was my winter 2024 knit list. And I listed five things that I want to knit this winter season. And one of them is the Cappuccino Cardigan uh, by Knits by Summer. So it's by Summer. <laughs> and I'm going to knit it in the winter. And uh, it calls for a worsted weight yarn. And I thought it would be nice to have a cardigan in my wardrobe that's like a nice... Um, neutral color and I decided to go with basically black <laughs> which is fine um this is Karen one pound and the color is dark gray mix and um it's got like it's actually a little bit shiny. I don't know if you can see that. The lighter colors that are mixed in or whatever are actually like kind of shiny. Almost like it's got Stellina in it, but it definitely doesn't. So it's this very interesting, like none of the other Karen one pound colors have this as far as I can tell only this dark gray mix it's odd and I love it <laughs> I love it so uh, the pattern calls for I think a US 8 needle size but I'm using I'm not using an 8 I'm using a 6 um, I did a gauge swatch it's sitting over there <laughs> Hang on. I did a gauge swatch. Stockinette. The, the pattern's in stockinette stitch. 
you can kind of see that shine. It actually helps with the stitch definition. Is it's not just this solid black thing, you know? So anyway, I'm really excited for this cardigan. Um, I knit a lot of swatches. I started with the eights and I definitely didn't have gauge, so I ripped it out. Tried sevens, tried sixes, I even tried fives. And oddly enough, my gauge with the sixes and the fives was pretty much the same. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess with worsted weight yarn, there really is a limitation on how many stitches you can fit into four inches. So I went with the sixes. Um, the fabric is not as dense as with the US fives. And uh, if you see the pattern photos, it's got a bit of drape to it. I think the designer used um, a yarn that's got cotton in it, which is going to have more of that drape. So I went with the US size sixes because it has it's um, not as thick of a fabric as the fives, and um, I'm loving it so far. As I knit, I, I'm continually reminding myself I have this gauge swatch sitting next to me while I while I knit it, um, just reminding myself you got to keep gauge because you can't keep making garments that are too big. Like let's keep, let's keep gauge, right? So, uh, this is a top down construction. I am not going to knit bottom up anytime soon. So <laughs> I'm doing top down socks and top down garments and that's just the way it's going to be. So this is a top down construction and um, I have the back and I have the right front here and then the left front is what I'm working on. So it's in this, I think it's called contiguous method. Um, I don't exactly know what that means, so I'm not even going to pretend to, like, define it for you, but, um, but I've knit the back and the right front as far as the pattern told me to. They're to the length where they're about to get, uh, joined on the side here, and then I need to do the left front down, and then that will get joined to the back here. But because it's a cardigan, it's going to be knit flat, so it won't be joined in the round, all the way around. Um, I'm not going to do steaking because this is acrylic yarn, and steaking with acrylic yarn I have done, and it's not, um, it doesn't look very good. And I don't mind purling, so I'm just going to knit this flat like the pattern says. And yeah, I'm just... I'm really excited. I like the yarn. Uh, I like the pattern so far. It's very um, easy to follow, well written, and uh, I like. I looked at other people's project photos on Ravelry before picking this pattern, and some folks had some notes in there that they had written just comments about. Um, someone wrote that the pattern was straightforward and easy to follow and just seeing comments like that really helped me decide um, whether or not to, to purchase a pattern. This is a paid for pattern. Um, if it's a free pattern, I'll download it and give it a glance. But if I have to pay for it first, then it's really helpful if someone's already knit the object, if they can share those thoughts. Um, I know it really helps me, so... Yeah, um, I would love to finish this cardigan before the end of January. So hopefully in the January makes video, this will be finished. That's, that's my goal. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the crafting stuff. Um, like I said, I, I finished a lot. I mean, that sweater was kind of a slog. So the fact that I finished that 
raglan pullover. I'm just so happy that's out of my whip pile and actually finished. And Michael or I will wear it. And <laughs> it will get worn and it will get used. And I'm really happy about that. So, um, yeah, I hope that you had a nice December. I know with all of the holidays, um, hopefully you had some time to spend with family and friends, but that you also had some time for yourself because that can be a bit overwhelming. And uh, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and you enjoy your crops, whatever they may be. Until next time, bye.